Hi, and welcome to my studio. I'm Daniel Ibanez. I'm so grateful to be here with you today. We are going to cover the artist John Singer Sargent in the Rebel Master Series, where we learn to paint like the old masters. Let's get started. John Singer Sargent, American expatriate, painter without peer, an artist who's inspired me since I was a little boy when I thought of the Master Series for Rebel, painting like the masters. I thought of no one else than John Singer Sargent. Here's where I wanted to start, no question. When I think about Rebel and what it can do, I think about these kinds of lay-ins of beautiful marks um, and these transparent shadows and, and how you could recreate that digitally. There's almost no software in the world that can do it other than Rebel. And so this is where we need to start for this series. And um, also because John Singer Sargent has been an inspiration to me since I was a little boy. Almost every single canvas I've ever touched is inspired by his paintings. So just looking at the construction of form, the beautiful big brush strokes that create the shadows and the highlights, the transitions, um, the boldness, the bravado, the confidence, the intention and focus. You can see that this is an artist who works a la prima, works wet on wet, works, works in a direct fashion, painting in an intimate way with their subject. This is the kind of painting that can happen only in, in this kind of courageous, um, a la prima, plein air kind of approach. And it's an approach that we can adapt to what we do with Rebel. Here's um, some zoom ins on some of my canvases. And you can see that my brush strokes are heavily inspired by the work that I've seen from Sargent ever since I was a little boy. Uh, even my uh, charcoal and, and chalk pastels have that same kind of strong influence. Um, here's a, a portrait uh, zoom in on, on done with acrylic that just, you know, done with just a few brush strokes in the style, in the kind of uh, energy of John Singer Sargent. You can see the way he handles the subject amidst the landscape, these beautiful brush strokes. You can see that some of the strokes themselves are, are commingled um, with blue and yellows and whites and greens, all this gray, all kind of in one stroke. And with the dirty brush settings with, with Rebel, you can do this. John Singer Sargent has inspired my landscapes, my portraits, my still lives. Um, as you can see here, the, the evidence is, is clear. He's also inspired my uh, plein air paintings, my, my little studies here with gouache and the quick bravado brushstrokes that, that make this kind of painting so entrancing. Um, even just studies of birds and, and looking at nature. Um, John Singer Sargent here has just made my work so much better. And so I'm, I'm excited to share with you a little bit more about the artist and about what he has done and how we're gonna use his work to inspire this session. Thank you for visiting me in this series. I hope we have a lot of fun. So here we are in Ravel, this amazing piece of software. We're gonna get into it little by little. What I wanted to do before we do though, is look at the kind of imagery that John Singer Sargent might be interested in painting, just based on the body of work that we have as evidence. Um, I wanted to just point out a couple of things. When we're thinking in the mind of John Singer Sargent, and we're going to set up our work to do something in that style, with that intention, and with that um, that aesthetic, right? That that set of goals and priorities. We have to think about the light because John Singer Sargent is all about tone. He's all about capturing the value more than anything else. So an image like this, for example, which you know is a is a, a kind of your traditional fashion portrait. Um, it's a good description visually of what the person looks like. It's a good maybe example of someone's ability to to do makeup or or to uh, style clothing or hair or something like that. But as far as a painting, I wouldn't find it to be that interesting. Um, there's just the, the quality of the light is is very flat. And so when you think about there's a lot of dimension and drama on the features of the face, but a lot of that is due to the makeup and maybe even in the, the airbrushing and the post-processing of the image. And maybe that's done in, in a, you know, an editing software like Photoshop or something. That's fine, but, but not for the intention that we have today, which is to paint the light, to paint the tones, to, to capture uh, that, that beautiful interaction of light and shadow. Uh, so, you know, maybe this is a great 
uh, example of, of, a, of a photographic portrait, but not what we want for today. Um, here is, is another example. So maybe you have something like this. Now this is the kind of image that I enjoy painting where the, the, it's very strong natural light and you have really strong shadows and really strong highlights and there's a lot of drama. This is the this is the, this is more Caravaggio than Michelangelo for our, us, our history kids, right? So this is more stage lighting, more spotlighting, more dramatic lighting, more emotional lighting, more um, intense lighting. And while you can find that in Sargent's work, um, you more often find something that's in the middle, um, something like this, uh, where the lighting, the shadows are there, they're strong, there's a really distinct um, family of shadows and family of highlights, but they, it doesn't go into like the dark blacks as much. Here you get a lot of um, subtle tones and color in the shadows and color in the highlights and it's, it's this interplay of, of subtlety in those dramas where it's not so exaggerated as this. So if we put them on sort of a spectrum, we might have something like this. And it's here where we find a little more of an inspiration for painting like that, that, that John Singer Sargent quality of light. We're back, we've narrowed it down to just these four, and I wanted to point something out before we go forward. Look at this, uh, the reference images panel is beautiful. What you have is this huge body of all of these images, and all you have to do is you just click here to upload and import a new reference, and you then click on an image that's hidden and just reveal it, and then you can resize it right to whatever size you want. You can then zoom in on it and crop it or flip it, um, whatever you want to do. The, the features are amazing. You can grayscale it or not. This is just amazing because each individual reference image is, is modifiable, is, is changeable. It allows you to uh, truly use references as they're intended. And then here we're going to try to paint this image. So um, I've never painted it before and you know, what the heck, let's just go for it. Um, the only other thing I want to point out, and let me just move this down here. This is my, my brush creator. I love keeping this tool at the ready. Um, I think making your own brushes is a really fun way to work. And in, in Rebel, we're going to do the same thing that we, we would do if we were John Singer Sargent. So we're going to pretend we're the artist himself. And as we set up for this project, we're just going to think uh, as, as he would. And a lot of the time, Sargent was using uh, charcoal. That was his initial lay-in. So um, it, with the software here, you can, you can hold control and, and then you can just drag your stylus across the canvas to enlarge the brush. Very cool. But since we're doing uh, charcoal, we're just gonna kind of pick this dark kind of semi-warm tone. And look at that beautiful, beautiful, beautiful mark. Um, let's, let's, let's show you a couple more things here. Look at this. So this is one of my custom brushes. Hardly custom, but just a little bit. All I had to do to create this is I went to my favorite charcoal brush, which is this charcoal brush number three, and uh, I just love it. If you were to zoom in on it, let me just zoom in here, you can see it has this little, little spit of the charcoal that kind of just like, you know, shoots off the, the tool at the end and as you change direction. It's just it's absolutely perfect um, in the way that it recreates uh, the mark of charcoal. So what I love is, you know, I can just take that brush and then I can just go over here and I can literally just right click it and then duplicate it. And all I did was duplicate it, oops, um, and then I just created a different brush head to go on top of it. And so to do that, you just, so I've got, say I've got the duplicated thing and then I just go, okay, so let's go to shape and grain. I can change the shape here. I can load in a new brush head and, or play with an, an add or whatever, and that's it. I just change the shape and you have a completely different feel. And you know, Rebel is amazing because not only is it gonna show the shape or, or the stamp of the brush head, but it's also gonna interact realistically with the texture of the simulated canvas. And you can see that it's doing that beautifully. That's exactly what canvas looks like when you draw on it with charcoal. So. Why am I into this software? Well, um, I'm into it because probably my two favorite mediums in the world, you know, outside of digital, is oil and charcoal. And Rebel excels at charcoal. It excels at oil. So 
And guess what? John Singer Sargent also does, <laughs> excels at, at oil and charcoal. So um, let's zoom back out here. And uh, we've got our full size canvas. And all we want to do right now is I'm just going to make kind of a little bit larger uh, tool here. And, and we're just going to draw this for, for practice. Um, Sargent was known for starting his, his drawings in, in charcoal. And so if we, if we were to think about well, what, what is this, what is this in the mind of the artist? What are we trying to capture when we're drawing in the style of John Singer Sargent? What we're trying to do is we're trying to capture the tone, the light and the dark, the story of the, of the lighting situation. And, um, and I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to change the opacity. Look, I'm just going to drag this down. So it's, it's the opacity is just dragged down to around, you know, around 50% here. And that means that as I do the lay-in, I, I can kind of just push gently and it's just going to kind of make a grayscale, not perfectly black. Um, and that's what I want. I want to be able, be able to sort of work my way towards those deep darks. Now, this is something that's a little different in John Singer Sargent's work from my own. Um, in my training, I would like to go in right for the darkest darks right away and, and get it as dark as I could. And then I would have, you know, on the one hand, I'd have the darkest dark over here, and then I have the lightest light over here, and then you have that whole spectrum of your value scale. You have that right away. But with Sargent, he wants to kind of instead, he wants to go into that middle, and then he wants to work toward the dark from the middle, and then work toward the light from the middle. Um, most likely getting this first and this last. But it's kind of a little different way of working, but the, it still makes sense. It's just a little different, right? So if we do that, what we can do is we say, oh, there's the hair, and then you can go, okay, here's the face. Um, and you're not thinking about it as hair and face or whatever. You're thinking about it in terms of shadow and light, right? So we're not drawing features, we're drawing tones. And that's the really big difference in drawing like or painting like an artist uh, in, the, in the mindset of John Singer Sargent. And so in order to do this well, you gotta sort of forget what you're drawing. It's not an object, it's just a tone. So you're not drawing a cheek here so much as you're just capturing the fall off of light, right? And so as you're working across this, you're not thinking, oh, does that look like a woman or a person or whatever? No, you're just thinking, hey, that's in shadow. Oh, that's in light and so on, right? The lip or that shape, just that shape, is that darker or lighter than the shape that's beside it? Great. And here's this is a sort of way of like hijacking your brain to be a good artist is to stop trying to draw things and just, you know, sort of draw... Um, you're not drawing things, you're just drawing shapes. You're not drawing things, you're just drawing shadows. You're not you're just drawing lights and darks. Now I get a little bit um, weary of just kind of doing so many tiny little marks. Um, I know that a lot of John Singer Sargent's uh, charcoals, there will be a lot of repetition of layering a mark, um, but just for the sake of the demo, I wanna speed it up just a little bit and use a bigger brush here. And this is a way of anticipating the goals of what we're gonna get to next. John Singer Sargent was um, all about trying to get the biggest brush in your hand as, as was possible and painting with that brush for, for as much of the painting as you could. Um, and, and so I'm going to sort of uh, in, embrace those, those goals right away using as big of a chunk of charcoal as, as I can. And um, here we can start to play with this little charcoal I made. I made this brush for the specific use of, uh, you know, right right here at this point in the drawing where you need a little bit of that like linear element. Now you can see I got into the, the highlight area a little bit too much with my big brush. I kind of made a mistake. So awesome, digital painting. You can just, you know, sample the the highlight and then paint right over it. And, and you can kind of you know, go in with your highlights in such a more friendly way than with real charcoal. So, um, you know, this is a, a way of working that might be sort of um, similar to Sargent, um, and you can see how much fun this uh, this is. Um, and we're going to introduce this painting process through drawing, through drawing with charcoal. Now, Rebella has this really cool feature where you can blend. So I just want to show you something really cool, really quickly here. Um, so if I take the blender here, I can kind of knock down the entire drawing like this and this is kind of similar to what what sergeant would do is he would do the charcoal study and then he would either hit it with a rag or some other 
other tool to sort of knock down all the hard edges because he didn't want to create a coloring book. You know, if you've got too perfect of lines and you, when you get to the painting process, all you're going to do is you're going to go in there and try to copy the lines and that's going to steal the magic from, from the canvas. We don't want that. Um, so one of the things that we noticed is that when Sargent would knock it all down like this, it would create this kind of foggy, silvered, almost gray toned canvas. And that's what he would jump into when he would do his painting. So if you want to do like truly capture the essence of John Singer Sargent, that would be one way to be even more authentic. So that's it. Let's move on to the next step. Now, even though this sketch would be really easy to do, we don't have very much to deal with in terms of the shapes. It's very much kind of a simple, uh, there's a lot of tone in there that we could explore a lot of color temperature changes but um, for the sake of this this whole demo let's just do something a little bit crazy um, first thing I'm gonna do is get my uh, get back on here to the charcoal here we're just gonna use this soft charcoal we're gonna move our we're gonna press 4 on the keyboard to move it into blend mode um, and just like we did last time I'll just show you how we can kind of knock down any of those hard edges until they literally disappear <laughs> 